Good morning. I'm sorry I could not video last night. I was just too tired. So we are going to finish Divided Kingdom today. It could possibly be in three videos. I'm going to try to go fast. So let's get started. Okay. So we know that we did Kings 12. We did that one. Now we're going to this one. Okay. So, all right. And the other thing I want to show you were the themes from uh, Kings 2. Um, the themes. God answers those who call on his name. Always remember that. God continually calls his people to repent and be faithful. Even the worst sinner. Always remember that. Those who refuse to repent and turn to God will suffer the consequences and be expelled from God's presence. Always remember that. Okay, so let's get started. Second book of Kings. All right, so Elijah denounces, oh, these names, a Ahaz, Ahazia, Ahazia, King Ahazia. All right, after the death of King Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Oh, geez. Um, okay, so the death uh, as as Isaiah fell through the lattice and in his home, and he laid sick. He sent messengers and a captain with fifty men to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether he should recover from the illness. So the angel of the Lord told Elijah to. Arise and go and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and tell them it, it is because there is no God in Israel that you're going to inquire of that God, the God of Ekron, and you shall not come down from the bed and you shall die. Because he's going to, not the God of Israel, but he's going to inquire the God of Ekron, which of course we know is not even real. So, um, you shall die. The, the messengers told the king, and the king sent them to bring Elijah to him. Elijah said, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down and consumed the captain and all his fifty men. It happened again. The king sent another captain, fifty men. The fire consumed him. It happened again. A third time. Yes. So, uh, let's see. The third time it happened, the captain fell down on his face and begged Elijah not to kill him. And the Lord told Elijah to go down with him and do not be afraid. So, Elijah went to see the king and told him, Thus says the Lord, because... You have sent messengers to inquire of Zael, of Baal, of Zebub, the god of Ekron. Um, there, is, there is no god in Israel. So to inquire of his word, and you will not come down from the bed. You will die. So it was repeated again. The death of Isaiah, because obviously he didn't listen. He was given a warning and he didn't listen. So the king died, and according to the word of the Lord, Jehoram, his brother, became king because King Ahaziah had no son, and the rest of Ahaziah's actions are in the book of Chronicles. So, Elijah is taken up into heaven. It was time for Elijah to go to heaven in a whirlwind. So, Elijah and Elisha set out from Gilgal. The Lord ordered Elijah to go to Bethel. But Elisha said, I will not leave you. I'm going with you. A group of prophets said, you know, the Lord is going to take your master away from you today. Elisha said, yes, I know, but I don't want to talk about it. And then Elijah said, the Lord ordered him to go to Jericho. And Elisha said, I will not leave you. 
she, this is repeated. He, he says this several times. So they go to Jericho and a group of prophets came and said, you know, the Lord is going to take your master away today. Alicia said, I know, but let's not talk about it. Then the Lord sent them to the Jordan River and 50 prophets filed, followed them to the Jordan. And Elijah took off his coat, rolled it up, put it on the water, and, and the water divided, and they crossed to the other side on dry ground. Now, who does that sound like? Moses, maybe? Um, Elisha succeeds Elijah. After they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what you want me to do before I'm taken away. And Elisha said, Let me receive the share of your power that will make me your successor. And Elijah said, well, that will be difficult. But if you see me be taken away from you, you will receive it. If you don't see me being taking, taken away, you won't. And all of a sudden, a chariot of fire pulled up with horses of fire that came between Elijah and Elisha. And Elijah was taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elisha saw it. So she has the power now. And cried out. And he never saw Elijah again. In grief, he tore his coat in two. And then he left with the 50 prophets. When he got to the river, he struck the water and divided it in two and walked on the other side. The 50 prophets from Jericho saw him. And the power of, and the power of Elijah is on Elisha. And they bowed before him. But apparently they didn't see Elijah being taken up. So there are 50 of them and they say, let's go look for your master. And Elijah says, no, you know, he's gone. But they insisted and they went looking for him. Finally, three days later, when they didn't find him, they came back to Jericho where Elisha was waiting for them. And he said, didn't I tell you not to go? So uh, Elisha performs miracles. Some men from Jericho went to Elisha and said, the water in the city is bad and causes miscarriages. So he told them to put salt in a bowl and bring it to him. And they did. And he went to the spring and threw in the salt. Let me turn this page. Keep you guys up to date. Did I have that? Okay. Okay. Um, so they told him to put, he told them to put salt in a bowl and bring it to him. They did. And he went to the spring and threw the salt in the water and said, the Lord said, I make this water pure and it will not cause any more deaths or miscarriages. And the water has been pure just as Eli uh, uh, Elisha said it would be. Elisha left Jericho to go to Bethel. And on the way, some boys came out of the town and made fun of him, calling him Baldy. Apparently, he was bald. Elisha turned around and glared at them and cursed at them in the name of the Lord. Two she-bears came out of the woods and tore the 42 boys to pieces. Now, I have to tell you, this was very difficult to understand, this book in, this, in Jeff Caven's Bible. So, I relied a lot on my breakthrough. So, just so you know. Okay. Um, the, it's all the same stories, though, obviously. It's just in clearer language. Okay, so Kings 3. Je Jehoram reigns over Israel. When King Ahab died, his son Jehoram, Jehoram, became king over Israel in Samaria. He reigned for 12 years he did evil in the sight of the Lord not like his father and mother because he did put away the pillar but he clung to the sin of Jeroboam and made Israel sin the war of Moab Misha the king of Moab was a sheep breeder and every year he had to give the king of Israel a hundred thousand lambs and the wall and the wool of a hundred thousand rams. But ki after King Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jehoram went to King Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and said, Come to battle with me against the king of Moab, 
because he's rebelled against the against me. So the so they went to march to go to war and i think we're start up here so uh after seven days there was no water and there was no water for the army or the livestock they needed a prophet so they called elisha but he said go to the prophets of your mother and father he means baal um and king Je jehoram jehoram King of Israel said, no, we need you, Elisha. But Elisha said, I will give nothing to Jehoshaphat. But since I respect King Jehoram, I will try. But you'll have to get someone to play the harp. I guess for inspiration. Like the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, you have to kind of relax to let the Lord speak to you. And this was the way Elisha had to relax. Uh, he listened to the harp. So they played the harp for Elisha, and the Lord came upon him, and the Lord said, I will make this stream, dry stream bed full of pools of water, and I will give the Moabites into your hand, and you shall conquer every fortified city. When the Moabites heard this, they got ready for war. They saw what looked like, uh, sorry, they saw what looked like blood in the water and thought, the Israelites probably turned on each other and they were all dead. So they went to the Israelites camp to loot it. But the Israelites attacked them and slaughtered many. They began to destroy every city until they got to the capital of city Ker Hears. Um, they surrounded it and the king of Moab realized he was losing so he tried to escape to syria but he failed so he took his oldest son evil guy and it's no different i guess than abortion but he offered him on the city wall as sacrifice to the gods of the moab the israelites were terrified it says here there came great wrath upon israel so they drew back from the city and returned to their own country like i said i didn't quite understand a lot of this i had to read the story and break through because it was very difficult um in, in to decipher and i have to tell you the book of kings the two are the two most difficult books that i've come across so far um and it seems like there's a lot of little stories that they kind of just have hang hanging ending and i wonder what the lord's telling us with this story he's obviously included this for a reason and the only reason i could think of on this one now there's a lot that this that this um king does bad and that will be repeated but um we should be very afraid of it worshiping any gods i mean it's obvious um but when i think um i saw someone uh when i when I think of it, I saw someone worshiping the devil. If I saw someone worshiping the devil, I would be scared and get away from them. So that's the only thing that comes to me with this story so far. There's so much more. I'm sure it will be revealed further on, but that's what I know so far. Elisha put the window widow's jar of oil. The wife of one of the sons of the of a prof of the one of the prophets cried to Elisha, "My husband is dead." And he served the Lord. And now my husband's creditor has come to take away my children to be his slaves. To I guess to pay off the, the, um, the debt. Alicia says, okay, wh what do you have in your house? She says, all I have is a jar of oil. She said, okay, um, go and borrow vessels of all your neighbors. And then go and pour them all in one. And fill up the next one and just keep filling them up that you can borrow. Elisha said, um, now go sell all the oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on the rest. So I wanted to show you over here in, um, is Elisha the rescuer. It may not sound like a very important miracle making one small jar of olive oil enough to fill many bottles for this poor widow. widow. But it made all the difference. Her husband had been a prophet. The family had lived simply. Now her sons were are being taken away as uh, to pay the family's debt. The practice is one of the ways that poor people were robbed of their land. Uh, the woman was about to lose everything. Olive oil was very precious. It was even used as a kind of money. But more importantly, one of the basic 
foods for rich people and poor people, uh, for both. Uh, Elisha's miracle saved the woman's land and her sons. It's a sign that God's care for the poor, uh, God's care for the poor and powerless people. So I thought that was good. Okay, so now Elisha and the Shumanite couple. One day Elisha went to Shuman, Sh Shunam. He he would go right by a rich woman's house who lived. Uh, who lived there along the way, and he, they would invite him in to eat every time he would come. One day she said to her husband, I'm sure that that man that comes here so often is a holy man. Let's build him a little room on the roof so he can come and rest here whenever he goes by. So one day Alicia returned, and she went up to the room and rested. And he asked, what can I do for you? And she said, well, she doesn't want anything or need anything. So Elisha asked her um, uh, to come by one day. And he told her as she stood in the doorway, by this time next year, you will be holding your son in your arms. And the woman said, please, sir, don't lie. You're a man of God. But the next year, she did give birth to the son. Okay, where are we up here? Yeah, so next year, she did give um, birth to the son. Um, and then, okay, the next one is Elisha restores Shunammite's son. Some years later, the boy was went out to join his father in the field, and his head hurt. And he brought him to his mother, and the boy, the boy died. The mother left the boy and went to Elisha, and he said, Here, take my staff and heal him. And... She said, I can't go alone. So Alicia sent her servant. So, so, um, but the staff didn't work. So Alicia went and laid on top of the boy, hand to hand, eyes to eyes, nose to nose, mouth to mouth, and his body began to warm. I know that sounds weird. Um, but the boy sneezed and woke up. And he took the son to his mother, and she fell to the ground and put her face to the ground. That's her thanking God. Um, Elisha purifies the pot of pottage. Just another little miracle where they say the food is poisonous, and Elisha puts um, something in it, some meal in it, like, I guess, meal, like oatmeal type thing. Uh, and it was no longer poisonous. So, Elisha feeds 100 men. Elisha has 20 loaves of barley and says, give it to the men that they might eat. And the servant says, how am I going to give this to 100 men? And he says, give it to the men. They will eat and they'll have some left. He said, he said it before them and they ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. Remember Jesus multiplying the loaves? It just happens to be the reading today <laughs> uh, that Jeanette, Jeanette, Jeanette is doing. So, Kings 5. Naaman is cured of leprosy. A highly respected commander of the Syrian army found out from one of his servants, an Israelite girl, that a skin disease that he had, leprosy, can be cured by Elisha. So, the king respected him so much he sent a letter to the king of Israel and then sent him with 30,000 pieces of silver. Now the breakthrough Bible says um, but K Jeff Caven says 10 talents of silver. So maybe it, it means the same thing. I don't know. It makes me curious and I'll look that up. Um, and then he gave him 6,000 shekels of gold and 10 changes of fine clothes. So the king of Israel said, how can the king of Assyria expect me to cure this man? Does he think I'm God, the power of life and death? He must be trying to start a fight with me. So when Elisha heard this, she sent word to the king, don't be upset. Send the man to me. So he told the man to go to the Jordan River and wash himself seven times and he would be completely cured of the disease. And the man left in a rage and saying, I thought he would at least come and pray and wave his hand over my diseased spot and cure me. Besides, aren't the rivers in my country better than any in Israel? I could have washed there. His servant went to him and said, if the prophet told you something difficult, you would have done it. 
Now, why not just go and wash yourself where he told you and be cured? So finally, the commander went to the Jordan, dipped himself in seven times, and he was completely cured of this flesh leprosy. Um, the flesh became like that of a child. He returned to Elisha with all his men and said, please, sir, accept a gift from me. Elisha refused. And, but the commander insisted, then let me take home uh, two, mule, two mule loads of earth and I will not sacrifice to any God except your Lord. So I hope the Lord, but I hope the Lord will forgive me when I have to accompany my king to the temple of God of, of Syria. Surely the Lord will forgive me. Elisha said, yes, go in peace. But Elisha's servant, Gehazi, thought he should have taken what he was offered. So he ran after him to get something for himself. He got 3,000 pieces of silver and the commander said, oh, please take 6,000. When Elisha found out um, let me see. I think over here. When Alicia found out, um, that the servant, uh, about the, what the servant did, she told the, the, her servant that the commander's disease will come upon you and you and your descendants will forever have this skin disease. Alicia prayed Open their eyes, Lord, and let them see. The Lord answered his prayer. The miracle of the axe head. The son of the prophets were doing some work, and Elisha went with them as they were cutting down the trees, and an axe fell into the water. And the sons were very upset because he, the, the axe was borrowed. So Elisha said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place, and he cut and he cut off his stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, pick it up. He reached in there and found the axe. I don't know why that little miracle. The Bible has some amazing stories, but I have to say these King books are a little bit strange. So I can't wait to see if Chronicle ties things together a little bit. Um, a Syrian attack is thwarted. The king of Syria was at war with Israel, so he chose a place to set up camp. But... Elisha sent word to the king of Israel, warning him not to go near that place because the Syrians were waiting to ambush him. So the king of Israel warned the people so they were on guard. And this happened several times. So the king, uh, the Syrian king was very upset and said, which one of you is on the side of the king of Israel? And one of them said, it's not one of us, it's the prophet Elijah or Elisha. He tells the king of Israel what you say, even in the privacy of your own room. The king of Syria said, find out where he is. I will capture him. So let me see if I'm putting you in the right place. Um, so uh, he sent the man to capture Elisha's servant was afraid. But Elisha said, because they, they circled around his city. He said, don't worry. We have more on our side than they have on theirs. And then he prayed and asked the Lord to open the eyes. Yeah, I think that's that was accidentally in the other one. Um, and let them see. The Lord answered his prayer. He asked the Lord to strike them, men blind. And they were. So Elisha went to them and said, you are on the wrong road. This is not the town you're looking for. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you are after. And so he led them to Samaria. And as soon as they entered Samaria, the king of Israel saw the Syrians and he asked Elisha if he should kill them. So Elisha said, no, and give them something to eat and drink and let them return to their king. So the king of Israel provided a great feast for them and sent them back to the king of Syria. From then on, Syria stopped raiding the land of Israel. And I wanted to show you this page. Oh, that was a healing. Um, okay. Um, mercy, not revenge. It must have been so tempting for Elisha. The king would have been so happy to kill these enemy soldiers who had come to kill Elisha. He would have been justified, right? But Elisha makes a different choice. Feed them and send them home. Have you ever had the chance of revenge and you passed it up? Did you ever face a situation where someone has been unkind to you but responded with kindness to him or her? It's a pretty good feeling. The story... 
the story that goes after this, the king of Syria stopped raiding the land of Israel. Mercy can be a powerful force. Try it. So I thought that was good. Um, I'm going to try to keep going fast. Um, okay, so seven. Um, ben, ben, ben hated uh, the siege of Samaria. They said Syrians stopped reigning the land of Israel, so I don't know. But now the king Ben-Hadad of Syria led his army against Israel to capture the city of Samaria. As a result, there was a food shortage in the city. A woman cried out as the king of Israel was walking by the city wall and said, Help me, your majesty. The, the, the other day, a woman suggested we eat my child and we would eat her child the next day. So we cooked my son and ate him. The next day, when we went, would eat her son. She hid him and she has been hiding. The king tore his clothes in dismay. Again, sounds like abortion. And those people who are close to the wall could see he was wearing a sackcloth under his clothes. He exclaimed, May God strike me dead if Elisha is not beheaded before the day is over. He sent a messenger over to get her before the message arrived. Elisha said to the elders, um, that murder the mur that murderer is sending someone to kill me. Now when he gets here, shut the door. Don't let him come in. The king himself will be right behind him. Then then they arrived. I thought this was weird because what does Elisha have to do with um this? I just, I don't, I don't get this part. He said, the Lord had brought trouble on us. And Alicia said, listen to what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow, you'll be able to buy, you'll be able to buy in Samaria 10 pounds of the best wheat or 10 pounds or 10, 20 pounds of barley for one piece of silver. The king's personal attendant said that can't happen, even if the Lord himself were to give it. Elisha said, you, you'll see it happen, but you won't get to eat any of the food. The Syrians flee. She means specifically to him. The Syrians flee. For men who had the skin disease, leprosy, were outside the gates of Samaria. They said, if we wait here, we're going to die. So they went to the Syrian camp. And the Lord made the Syrians hear what sounded in advance like a large army with a horse and chariots. So the Syrians thought the king of Israel sent armies to attack them. So they fled their lives, abandoning their tents and starving. And the starving men with leprosy went into the tents and ate and drank and took all the silver and gold and clothing. When they said, we shouldn't be doing this. Sorry. Um, let's see. Um, we should keep it. We shouldn't keep it to ourselves. We're sure to get punished. And so let's go now and tell the king officers. So they left and went back to Samaria, told the guards at the gate and the king believed the Syrians were planning like an ambush because they knew the famine and they thought they would leave the city and to find food and they would ambush us. So they sent some men to the camp and saw, and then finally saw it was abandoned. So they looted the camp and as the Lord said, 10 pounds of the best um, wheat and 20 pounds, whoops, ah, and 20 pounds of barley were sold for one piece. And remember, um, the personal attendant, the king's officer uh, in charge, the officer was trampled to death by the people and died as Alicia had predicted when the king went to see him the officer would see the grain but he would never be able to eat any of the food and that's what she said or he said and that is just what happened he died trampled to death by the people at the city gates okay page over here i wanted to show you a box um the last shall be first the syrians are winning there's their siege is starving out the people of the city of Samaria. Just when all seems to be lost, some lepers discover the Syrian army camp has been suddenly deserted. In this dramatic story of despair turned into victory, the people at the bottom of society are the first ones to realize the good news. Lepers are outcasts because of their contagious skin disease. They have to live outside the city. People turn away from them. Now they are the heroes and get to deliver the good news, and the Syrians are gone. Throughout the Bible, we see unlikely heroes, people no one would notice, that end up playing the role 
in God's plans. God seems to have a special place in his heart for people who don't have it all together. That's true. That's so beautiful. I wanted to share that. Um, so eight, the Shunanite woman's land is restored. Okay. Remember the woman whose son was brought back to life? Well, prior to the famine, she had been told by uh, Elisha that the famine was coming and it would last seven years and she should leave the area if she can, if she could. So he, she and her family went to Philistia, Phil, Phil, Philistine, maybe Philistine, I don't know, for seven years. Yeah, the Philistines. Um, so at the end of the seven years, they returned and went to the king to get their land restored. And she found the king talking with Elisha's servant. The king wanted to know about Elisha's miracles. By the way, I don't think that was leprosy that that fellow had, just some kind of skin disease. Um, because if he were if the if he were contagious, I don't think they would allow him around everyone. And now the supposedly the the, the servant has it. But anyway, so she found the king talking to Elisha, the servant. The king wanted to know about Elisha's miracles, so she was telling he was she was telling him about him. While the servant was telling the king how Elisha brought the dead person back to life, the woman made her appeal, and it was her son. So the servant said to the woman whose son Elisha brought back to life, in answering the king's question, she confirmed, yes, it was true. Um, so the king called in an official and told him to give her her land back, which included the value of all the crops that her field had produced during the seven years he had been she had been away. So that was Interesting. The death of Ben Hadad. Uh, Elisha went to Damascus when the king Ben of Syria was sick. He sent Haz Hazel, one of his off officials, to take a gift and ask the Lord to find out if he was going to get well. So Hazel went, and Elisha answered the Lord. Um, the Lord revealed that he will die, but go to him and tell him he will recover. And so Elisha, Elisha answered, the Lord revealed that he would die, but go to him and tell him that he will recover. Then Elisha stared at him with a horrified look. Um, Hazel became uncomfortable and suddenly Elisha burst into tears. Why are you crying? Hazel asked. Because I know the horrible things you will do against the people of Israel, Elisha said. You will set the fortress on fire and slaughter the finest young men and batter their children to death and rip open pregnant women. How could I do that? Now, again, it sounds like abortion. How could I do that? Hazel asked. I'm nobody. The Lord has showed me you will be king of Syria. Hazel went back to King Hadad, Ben, Ben, and... um. When he asked what Elisha said, he told him, you will get better. Then he took a blanket, soaked it in water, and smothered the king. That was weird. Um, and Hazal succeeded King Ben-Hadad as king of Syria. I'm not sure I'd be able to follow the Lord's instructions the way Elisha did when he found out those horrible things that King Hazal would do. I'd be tempted to intervene in some way. Um, God forgive me, right? Jehoram reigns over Judah. King Joram, son of Ahab, was king over Israel. But when King Jehoram became king of Judah, he ruled in Jerusalem for eight years. His wife was King Ahab's daughter, like that family he followed like that family, he followed the same ways. He sinned against the Lord, but uh, the Lord was not willing to destroy Judah because he promised his servant David that his descendants would always continue to rule. This makes me think of all the times people say, why does God allow evil to happen? Um, we don't know why God's bigger plans. We just have to trust him. We have to have faith. Um, okay. Um, Isaiah Azar reigns over Judah. Judah... Uh, Isaiah reigns over Judah. I'm going to end this in a minute. Um, in the twelfth year of the reign of J J Joram, the son of Ahab was king of Israel. Ah Ahiza's son, Jehoram, became king of 
Judah at the age of 22, and he ruled Jerusalem for one year. Since he was related to King Ahab by marriage, he sinned against the Lord just as King Ahab's family did. Then he joined the king Joram, Joram of Israel in a war against the king Hazal of Syria. The armies clashed at Ramuth and Gilead, and Jor, Jor, Joram was wounded in battle. He returned to the city of Jezreel to recover from his wound, wounds, and king Ahaziel went, Ahaziah went to visit him there. Okay, we'll continue on the next one.